views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Welcome to Art Time with BX Art Factory. My name is Kefra Ife, and I'm excited to be partnering with BronxNet to bring you this episode today. You're gonna learn a little bit about me as an artist and how I became an artist, and you will find out how to make a canvas out of popsicle sticks and cardboard. I pretty much found out I wanted to do art when I was in high school. I um, I figured out I could draw and um, I had it that sparked an interest in architecture um, so w running with that I went um, uh, to Syracuse University I didn't go for architecture unfortunately uh, I was going to transfer but I didn't and then I chose to do uh, fashion design so fashion design is where I started evolving my own style in art um, doing uh, a lot of fashion illustration, which I found was a lot of passion, and I um, I had a lot of passion for that. So I jumped into art illustration and um, fashion illustration, really. And uh, then my journey from there, like I graduated college, uh, started uh, as an indie fashion designer, and. Then I decided I wanted to start leaning more on my um, my art, the art side of things, instead of construction and sewing and cl making clothes. So from there, I went to um, I decided I wanted to do portraits. So for about uh, I say like a year, two to three years, I drew every single day whether it was just um, a little thing or I had a project I was working on. And eventually that developed in um, me doing uh, hyper-realism and also like refined more my style of my own um, characters that I, that I create. And that's pretty much, um, I've just been rolling with that and doing a combination of it all um for the past couple of years i knew i wanted to be an artist um in high school i started doing little portraits and it brought joy to me so i continued doing it my need to be an artist comes from the need to create uh drawing and painting is just a small part of um, my repertoire as like I've figured if if you can do it with your hands I'm gonna learn how to do it and I did um, still mastering some things um, and working on it but essentially it's joy it bring it brings joy so you know you want to do things that bring you joy so this that's what brought me to art and has me here to this day I've lived in the Bronx my entire life. I've, um, I moved here from Jamaica, West Indies when I was 12 years old, my entire family. And um, I've lived here pretty much, uh, except for when I went to college in Syracuse, uh, Syracuse University, and a brief odd stint of me living in Ohio for a couple of months. But for the pretty much the most part, I've lived in the Bronx my entire life. So, um, that's my relationship to the Bronx. I do a of, um, mostly illustrating um, with marker, pencil. Um, I do paint, uh, this is one of my paintings behind me. Um, it's not my favorite thing to do painting, but um, my, my ultimate most favorite thing is drawing with uh, graphite pencils on wood. Um, wood is like my favorite 
like medium to work on. It's very forgiving and you can work with everything, paint, um, you can watercolor, marker, you'd be surprised. Um, color pencil is like butter <laughs> on wood. And um, when I'm not working on like a, a wooden canvas, I use Bristol board um, paper. And um, a lot of my techniques are, like I wouldn't say, like my original characters are not manga-like, but they have characteristics of that, but it's just my own look that I bring to animation and illustration. And um, fashion design, like I add fashion into everything I draw also as much as I can. And um, that's about it. My that's some it ranges from whimsical to hyper realistic. It's it runs a gamut in all mediums. The challenges as a Bronx artist is uh, there's not a lot of outlet for expression as an, a Bronx artist with, out in the Bronx itself. I'm sure there's a, like a few organizations you can work with, but outside of that, it's very sparse. Um, we have, you know, the Bronx Museum and um, we have BX Arts Factory, but it's not like a very large um, choice. You don't have a big choices between like how to display your work uh, that's one of the things also we're very art store desert <laughs> there's an art store desert here in the Bronx uh, we had a great arts and craftsman on White Plains Road and I went there every chance I got to pick up my um, my essentials that I needed and I tried you know but one artist you can't support a whole store so they eventually left because no sales and it was very sad because it was literally walking distance and I could just go and pick stuff up. Now I have to go to Harlem or Manhattan or further into Manhattan for a decent art store. And yeah, so those are the deficits like getting materials and opportunities to display your work. That's the my only qualm with the Bronx. I believe artists and creatives are important because one, art creates a conversation. And when we say art, we have to remember it runs the gamut of graphic art, music, poetry, and all those kinds of things. And I feel those bring a nourishment to the soul um, if it's not just visually audio, it, it puts you in a place um, where your mind can be open. And I feel we need creatives to, to put us in those spaces um, with their creations. And um, yeah, it's just, we need that. Like you need music in your life, you need something nice to look at and being a creative being able to give that is a blessing my hopes for my future in art um like i i don't like to project too far into the future and necessarily use the word hope in in a sense in the sense of oh i hope I, this happens um like for me, I want to illustrate books. I've illustrated quite a few books myself, but they've never seen the light of day. Like I, I used to illustrate books to read to my son. And, um, and that was, and they're just been put away. So I want to bring that out to the world in the, my next upcoming projects. That's what I want to work on is doing, getting out my books and not have them tucked away <laughs> gathering dust and what I do hope for is that they're accepted or received um, well by my audience that's my hope
back to our time. Um, again, I'm Kefra and we're gonna be learning how to make a wooden canvas out of popsicle sticks and cardboard. The supplies we're gonna need uh, for the project are a four and a half by six inch piece of cardboard. You can certainly use a bigger size if you need or if you want to make a bigger canvas, but for this particular one, four and a half by six, approximately 16 popsicle sticks. Uh, they fit perfectly on top. A glue of your choice. Um, I prefer Magnetac glue, or you could use a uh, glue gun and a glue stick, uh, whichever one you're most comfortable with, or Elmer's glue, any kind of glue that will stick wood to cardboard. Scissors to cut your cardboard to size. A ruler uh, to measure your to make your measurement, and um, paint to make your little painting afterwards. I'm using watercolor, but you can certainly use acrylic or temper paints if you have whatever you have on hand. All of these supplies are available uh, whether you want to eat your way to the fun by having your mom buy a popsicle stick buy popsicles and then you get your popsicle sticks that way or you can get them at any craft store or the dollar store for a dollar and um so pretty accessible and that's it for the oh and paint brushes for your paint so after you've finished um getting an adult to, or to help you cut your cardboard and you have your cardboard cut to size you're gonna take your popsicle sticks and you're gonna generously put your glue on each stick. Luckily, uh, all these, um, I cut it to size where it fits perfectly for your 16 popsicle sticks. very simple and this is the most of uh, the work that you'll be putting in actually other than when you do your painting that's where your creativity comes in and... try not to get glue on your hands <laughs> Frame. Now you just have to fill in the frame. And while you're gluing, you could just think about what it is that you want to paint. If you haven't had any ideas yet. piece in. Make sure everything is straight. And you want to let it sit and dry for a few minutes before you, um, before you get into painting. But you have your wooden canvas. Well, we're watching glue dry. <laughs> we could just look at a different style of how you can arrange your popsicle sticks. Um, the original canvas here holds 16 popsicle sticks. Now if you get two extra, you'll have 18 popsicle sticks and you just create a different pattern. So you have two popsicle sticks, um, then one popsicle stick, and then the pattern repeats from there until you have them all on the same. The, the, the canvas is pretty much the same size as the one you used here, and you're just um, alternating to create a different pattern. And just so you don't have cardboard peeking tr through, you could paint whatever color you want in the background, whatever your favorite color is, to give it a pop of color and add to your design. Our canvas should now be dry, you know, nothing falling off. <laughs> you got everything in place. Now, 
I was thinking what what to paint so I'm gonna paint for you these are watercolors you could use your acrylic paint of course which is great um, as I said on wood you could work with a lot of materials on wood even crayons so even if you don't have paint and you have crayons go to town with some crayons also you know, don't forget your brush uh, so I thought of doing a little mushroom so <laughs> you're gonna do a little drawing of a mushroom and for here do the little hood first and we're just gonna do a little gonna go in and fill that in as we go but right now we're just getting a little shape for mushrooms you certainly could do whatever you want portrait flowers animals whatever you want to Also, this helps with recycling, by the way. Um, cutting down on landfill, so turn your garbage into art. <laughs> We're using watercolor is pretty much the same as acrylic. Um, it's very forgiving. Uh, you can clean it. It cleans up very easily. Um, it's just, uh, you know, trial and error to see which one you work with best. Um, I can't say one is better than the other. Uh, but I just recently started working with watercolor and I love it. It works well on paper, it works well with the wood, as you can see. And like it can give you a little bit of a dreamier look um, when you use watercolor so it's a little thinner of course but it's all about whatever technique that you want to use we just have fun <laughs> art is you know it's supposed to be fun relaxing so don't overthink too much Okay, so that's like a little base, a little base, a little mushroom. Um, so I'm gonna go in and do some outlining and we'll be all done. specifically because um, just to give it a, a little bit more pop like it pops off the page uh, if we had all the time in the world I could do all of that without having to outline but it just gives it a little pop a little more oomph uh, when you have a little outline so I use red like different shade two different shades of red and do two different shades of brown to achieve my my little stump here and just get in there with a little tiny brush and you can go in and give it a little outline Thank you. 
Now you don't have, with outlines, you don't necessarily have to draw around the entire thing. You could, you know, just eyeball it, see what looks good to you. And yeah, like I said, just have fun with it. With wood, wood canvases, you could, it works uh, like a beauty with anything any medium that you want. You could use chalk even. You could even use chalk on there if you want. It's not gonna live very long <laughs> on there. Unless you do get, there There are products on the market that you can spray, call a spray fixative, and it will hold it in place and you could have it for as long as you take care of it. Um, so any kind of there's don't don't restrict yourself you could even use wax if you want <laughs> like do a wax drawing by burning a candle you could wood is so beautiful to work with I love it so you just have do your little outline and I think I'm gonna put a little grass in here Make it a little bit more festive. Just a little more to look at. So it's, this thing is great because everything just folds up into into a one. Not a lot of cleanup with the with wood. So well not with wood, but with this watercolor. And you just go in there, put a little couple blades of grass. Hopefully you enjoyed whatever it is that you created on your canvas and you could hang it up, display it. Of course you'd have to put a little stringy thing here. And I always uh, sign all my work with my fingerprint, so we're gonna do that. And Using marker, I use marker <laughs> to do this. And just pop that right there. And you have my little fingerprint there, and I put my signature underneath <laughs> as well. joining us today at our time with uh, BX Art Factory and BronxNet TV. Uh, tune in to the next episode and enjoy. <laughs>